mentioned you in passing. Oh. <laughs> Go in if you must, Mr. Andrews. Uh, Charlie! But you've been warned. Phipps? She's terrific. Will you look at that? It cracked, but the ball didn't come through. Your powers of observation never cease to amaze me. Ah, something new, huh? What do you call it? Oh, I'd like to call it unbreakable glass, but I can't yet. It's the sandwich principle, simple, really. Two layers of glass laminated with a solution of methyl cellulose. <laughs> Terrific! It's still too brittle. Why are you interrupting me at an hour when any intelligent, ambitious young man would be at work? I am at work. That's what I came over to tell you. I got the job with Sir Harold Metcalf. I'm writing the feature article. I'm handling the publicity. I I'm promoting the whole thing. This is my big chance, Professor. Good, then I'm sure you should be off somewhere trying to look very busy. I'm covering the whole race from start to finish, 300 miles cross country. Race? What race? The Metcalf Cup, the Grand Prix. This is the biggest auto race of the year. 10,000 pounds is the winner. Nine countries have entries, even the Japanese. Well, they're the dark horse. And all the top drivers, Lanzano, Wolheim, Lacour. Lacour? What'll he be driving, do you know? His long stroke is fan, I'll probably. You stay for lunch. I want to hear more. Wolheim. Lacour. Now, that's the real thing. 300 miles nonstop. Yeah. That means we'll see the big engines. Nine liters, 9,000 cubic centimeters. Monsters, gas-guzzling dinosaurs. Fast, too, but heavy in the corners. They can be beaten. The time is right. The fella could come along with the right little design now and beat them all. We almost did, the right fella. What are you talking about? Don't chilly shally communicate. <laughs> I'm talking about Harry Owsley. Owsley? Oh, he's got some guts, that Harry Owsley. One of the best British, of course. I saw his smash up. Well, he was almost killed in this race. Well, here, take a look at these. Harry's making a comeback. He's got his own car now. Here, he designed it himself. I just... Yeah. He's a good friend of mine, Harry. Great guy. Hey, you could meet him if you like. Was he injured badly? Oh, miss, you should have seen it. All mixed up together, bits and pieces, blood spurting everywhere. We're having lunch. I was going to do an article on him, a great human interest. Uh, yeah, a real underdog. Why the past tense? Well, uh, because Harry's broke. He ran out of money before he could finish the car. I see. That is a shame. Well, I told him all about you and about some of your ideas. He'd love to meet you. Well, that's very interesting, but I have my own work to do. I can hardly afford my own experiments. Shame. A guy like that ahead of his time, not even getting a chance. Put everything he had into that car, too. Oh, he's a great admirer of yours, Professor. Boop. Over at camshaft, with a 7.6 capacity. Yes. Hemispherically headed cylinders. Yes, my own design. Have any idea what you'll be up against? Nine liter engines. Cars with twice this horsepower. And you really expect to win? Yes, well, I know we have problems. Problems? Mm. Professor Deverell, I don't expect to win because I don't even expect to start. I couldn't finish it, even if I could answer all your questions. I've run out of money, I'm out of luck. Now, with all due respect to you, I never sought after a partner. I've always gone my own way. Partner? Well, I just thought you might be interested, Professor, but uh, I guess I uh, got a little carried away. You certainly did. Sorry, Harry. No sorrows needed. I appreciate your time. I'm only sorry that, uh, well, you don't think the car's good enough. Wait one minute. Who said the car wasn't good enough? Did you hear me say that? 
We said... Will you please stop inventing words and thoughts for me? I think and speak quite clear. Mr. Owsley, your car is simply brilliant. Almost. If you would be interested in a partner for this upcoming race, I would be flattered, sir, to join you. But I warn you, my interest is short-lived. I have other fish to fry. My intention is to win this race, nothing less. Is that yours? Yes, sir. Winning is my interest. Well, there you are, then. When we will. Partners. The London Daily Messenger is proud to be the torchbearer, so to speak, of this new age, this world of speed. And we intend that this race shall become an annual event to show the world the finest racing machines and the metal of the men that drive them. So I am especially pleased to be able to welcome from America a genuine pioneer of the motor car, Mr. Henry Ford. And finally, to demonstrate that our Grand Prix is truly international, we have an entry from the Japanese Empire. I present the Emperor's representative, Count Oyama. <laughs> Did you see him? Well, it's Kilkis. Who's Kilkis? Do you know him? We've met. Japan, like its people, is small but industrious. He's the probably just about the most himself. crooked, dangerous man in the world. What's he doing here? Azuki Motor Works will reveal a racing car of the highest possible standard. I don't wish to cause Mr. Henry Ford any sleepless nights, but he may well find that the future of the automobile lies rather further west than he thinks. <laughs> Mr. Kilkis, uh, what is your role in this race? Oh, a very modest one, I assure you. Shall we say a kind of east-west ambassador? And this Japanese car, uh, what chance does it have in the race? Chance? We will win this race. Gentlemen! Here we have our Anglo-American entry. Hands across the sea, as you might say. Here we have Harry Alsey, our very best British driver, and his collaborator, Professor Quentin E. Deverill. My dear Professor, what a surprise to find you here. Well, let's have a photo of them together. We meet again. I can't tell you how delighted I am to have this chance to cross the sword with you. Once more. Make the most of it. Well, we've improved the uh, compression by about 4%. I don't think we'll do better than that. No. Let's take it out. Hey, it looks great. I wish you'd let me take a photograph of it, Professor. It, it would be good publicity. We don't need publicity. We just need to win the race. Let's improve the aerodynamics. And increase the engine efficiency. Look at this. Unbreakable. Stone or a pebble at high speed can cost a man his life. He's done wonders. These aren't wonders, Harry. Simple applied science. The race is only a week away. Now we need wonders. Here are the figures on the petrol testing. Ah. Each row shows the average consumption at that speed. You did all these? You're a whiz. <laughs> Elementary mathematics. QED. Hey, that's what you should call your car. QED. It's Latin for quite easily done, and it's the professor's initials to boot. It's Harry's car. Oh, I like it. It's a good name. QED. Forget the blaster's name. Look, Harry, we've got everything we need to win. Stamina, mobility, everything but sheer speed. Look, 
Here's the finish line, and the road is straight all the way up to it. Just built for the big thoroughbreds. Let's face it. We're going to lose it in the last stretch. Well, Harry, uh... Get the fuel tanks out. We're reworking the whole back end. Huh. Daddy? I'll need these parts. Find them. Phipps can drive you. Sorry, Charlie, you'll have to leave. I need to concentrate. Speed. Remember me? Oh, I can't say I can, actually. Oh, don't worry. Dirty paws. Quite understand. Don't look bashy. Just popped in to see everything was hunky-dory, clear about the rules, that sort of thing. Ah, oh, you're from the Royal Automobile Club, then. Quite right. You know, going round all the entrants, just checking up. I do carry on. Don't let me stop you. Not too impressed with your precautions round here, old boy. Can't be too careful, you know. Yes, well, we lock everything up when we finish work. Maybe, but no catches on the windows. No fire buckets. Yes, well, this is Professor Deverell's workshop. Oh, and don't leave plans on the table like this. Always keep them in a drawer. Bit of scoundaggery going on. You know, foreigners, not all sportsmen, like us. Better safe than sorry. Yes, of course. Thank you. Got um, something special in there? Uh, up your sleeve? Thank you. Well, cheery by, Harry, old man. Best of luck. We're strictly neutral, of course. I mean the club. All rooting for you as one man, actually. Thank you. Nice fella. Very helpful. Oh, yes. Now, the last time I heard of Mr. Bassey, he was a guest of His Majesty the King. Six months. Fraud. Cream? Kakutaro Mononisi, Masita. I am telling him you're the greatest driver in the world. Of course. And it's true. For the money I'm paying you, you better be. He says that if you should fail, he forgives you, as long as you perform honorably. Those are not my sentiments. All right, Bassie, what have you got? There we are, Mr. K. The whole works, delivered on the dock, as per usual. That's G. Bassie Esquire. Uh, what's this? It's a new exhaust system. What's he up to? Hey, why worry, huh? You have the best car here. I'm the best driver. You don't begin to comprehend, do you? I'm not here for the sport. I'm here to win power. Once I win this race, the Japanese will give me everything I need to capture the world's markets. The motor car's just the beginning. I aim to have an empire that will capture the world. Yeah. On the other hand, if you lose, I don't intend for that to happen. So don't tell me not to worry. Deverell has the most unpredictable mind I've ever encountered. So? So we don't want him in the race. Do we? You should be able to arrange that. Hold on now, Mr. Kilkis. That's not quite my line of country. I have made an investment. I expect my investments to pay dividends. If they don't, I liquidate. I'm 
incredible. It works. Of course it works. And that rocket has enough thrust to double our speed in the straightaway. You examined the rules, Charlie? There's nothing that says you can't have a rocket or anything you want, as long as it's part of the car. Good. Is this workable? It's fair, but it's dangerous. This insulation may not be good enough. It's a risk. But we can win with this. And it's the only way we can. I'm for it. We're about to cross a frontier. Rocket propulsion. I hope we're ready for it. in there. He's dead to the world, miss. Thanks, Fritz. I don't see how they can keep going. The professor hasn't slept for two nights. He'll be okay. He's used to hard work. Incredible man, isn't he, Charles? Sure. Genius. And very modest, really. In fact, he's perfect. Which is probably why he doesn't need to eat or sleep. Charles, is anything the matter? No. I'm just tired like any ordinary mortal. Charles. I wish you'd call me Charlie. <laughs> very well. Charlie. You see... I... My arm's broken. Jenny, a doctor. Yeah, look. Oh, thinks we saved the car. Another day tomorrow. Well, what are you gaping at? It's a perfect fit. You're not. You're not thinking of driving. No, I'm not thinking of it. I'm doing it. Who do you expect to drive tomorrow? Harry can't. But, Professor, you've never driven in a single race. It's far too dangerous. Nonsense. I have a natural affinity for speed. But Brunelli's a professional. He'll, he'll run you right off the road. Oh, yes? Let him try. Charlie's right. <laughs> it's only a race. Only a race. If Kilkis wins tomorrow, mark my words, the world will rue it. He's after power, as always. Power he uses for evil. Anyway.
Anyway, if I need advice, I can always use the expertise of my riding mechanic, Phipps. Uh, just half a mo, Governor. I see. That's how it is. I'm trusted up to the final test and then found lacking. Oh, golly, it's not like that at all. I think you're being unfair. Our concern is for you. That's... Very nice, thank you. Look, it is Harry's car. Is it fair to him? All right, call it off. It's all over. Finished. What about it, Harry? Tell him. Professor! You're my partner. If you want to drive the car, it's all right with me. French car. That's Lacour's. He's a Chevalier, you know. A real one. I think perhaps he's nose heavy. What? The professor says he doesn't like the setting of the front springs. Morning. Germans. That's Wolheim. Yeah. <clears throat> Kaiser gave him a medal last year. Does he have inclined valves? Uh, what a Gentlemen, I'm here to win this race because that'll put my name up front, which is where I like it. That's Henry Ford. And because that sells automobiles. Now, I've got a pretty fair driver here. You may have heard of him. This is Barney Oldfield. Now, if Barney breaks the record, as I expect him to, I'd like you to put his picture in the paper. But I'd like you to remember the name of the car he drove. <laughs> Gentlemen, please prepare your machines to start the great motor race in 45 minutes' time. What are they doing? Well, there's a, a one-ton limit. Maybe this brute's uh, too heavy. Another thousand pounds in this for you. He mustn't finish. I don't care how you do it.
gentlemen, in first place after 10 miles, Mr. Brunelli, number two. Second place, Monsieur Lecour, number 10. Third place, Mr. Devereaux, number seven. And currently in fourth place, Mr. Oldfield, number four. Wait a minute, gentlemen. Let's not forget who's paying for this show. The London Messenger. miles. First place, Mr. Brunelli, number two. Second place, Mr. Devereaux, number seven. Third place, Mr. Oldfield, number four. And Monsieur Lecour has retired. Adcock, put this over the wire. France is out. <laughs> Second, Mr. Oldfield. And third, Herr Wolheim. Where's the professor? Gentlemen, a report has just come in of heavy snow in the North Midlands. Mr. Brunelli, number two. And Herr Volheim in second place. And Mr. Deverell, number seven, is now in third place. He's back in it. Mr. Oldfield is missing. Bad cock. Oldfield is missing. Quick.
Mr. Brunelli is now averaging 67 miles an hour and is still in first place. And Mr. Devil is now in second place. And Herr Volheim has retired. Engine trouble. Herr Kack, Volheim is out. Put it over the wire. Germany is out! What's the matter? He's out cold. What are you going to do, Andrews? We've got to get our stories out. Yeah, well, hey, you know, let's not worry about this, gentlemen. Why don't we just I've come right down, 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 down You just write down your messages, and I'll take them personally. Don't have any good. No, I can't wait. Yeah, let's try this. Janet, do you really know how to do this? You see? Everything's under control. Madonna! We need something under the wheel. Ah, get those two posts. Professor's in the lead. Deborah should be making his move about now. There's five miles of curves before the finishing straight. Now he's got to pull close enough to Brunelli to use the rocket at the finish.
Yes, there's a head. No, no, there's something wrong. They're on fire. Come on, Gaza! We've left them all behind! <laughs> Proud moment, Victoria. Uh, one moment, please, Sir Harold. I'm sorry, Professor Derrell. I regret to inform you that you have been disqualified. There's nothing in the rules against the use of rockets. We checked. Oh, no, 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 no. The rocket was unusual, but quite proper. But the rules do plainly state, I'm afraid, that both driver and mechanic must cross the finish line together. Sir Harold, Mr. Brunelli in the Azuki is to be declared the winner. What do you want? Cut that! Oh, that's oh, that's 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 that. Most embarrassing. Mr. Brunelli, uh, on the occasion of the Daily Messenger card... Sir Harold! Sir Harold, one moment, please. Oh, now. I'm afraid there has been a protest. A protest? What again? Yes, sir. The Azuki motor entry is being reweighed. What? I object! Stop doing this! You do not have permission! Will you please step off the weighing platform? Yes, you. off the platform. Everyone off the Everybody platform. Everybody get off the platform, please. This car is disqualified. It is clearly overweight. But how can that be? Incredible as it may seem, someone has changed the engine. Aggravating. Well, I hope you've got it right this time. <clears throat> I now declare the winner to be. Mr. Barney Oldfield. <laughs> You're a clever man, Phipps. He tipped them off, you know. How did you know they'd switched engines, Phipps? I used these. Oh, engines like music to my ears. All those years as a London cabbie. Now, your four cylinder goes bippity, 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 but your eight cylinder goes boppity, boppity, boppity. <laughs> <laughs> Difference between a waltz and a tango. Phipps, you amaze me. business. That took us all by surprise. I like that. I knew right away you were my kind of man. Sir, you want to buy my rocket idea? Is that it, Mr. Ford? No, sir, I do not. Rockets and automobiles don't mix. I think you proved that. But I'll tell you what I do want. That new windshield of yours, that's a lifesaver. Just the kind of thing I'm after. You name your price. And then we'll dicker. Well, uh... I tell you what. 
I'll give you the same as the prize money you would have won with the race. How's that? Well, that's all right with me, but you'll have to ask my partner. Everything on that car is half his. Oh, well, yes, that's... Uh, that's fine. That's very fine. Thank you. Then, gentlemen, you've got yourselves a deal. <laughs> well, time's money. I've got to get back to Detroit. <clears throat> Nice meeting you, Governor. I've been watching you. You're kind of fast on your feet. We can always use a man like you. If you ever want a job, you look me up. Henry Ford. Good day to you. Did you hear that? They offered me a job. <laughs> well, Fibs, it could be quite an opportunity. The choice is yours. I won't stand in your way. I just remembered. I've got a job already. <laughs>